What's up everyone? It's Ruby here bringing you guys another video. We're back with some YouTube content and we're going to start pushing them out more regularly so you can expect more YouTube content coming in the future. And not just live streams and not just Twitch, but I do also stream on Twitch. If you ever want to check me out when I am live, twitch.tv slash rubidiummoon down in the description right below. You can follow me on my Twitch channel so that you can know when I go live every single time. So, let's talk about The Elder Scrolls 6. The long-awaited game for the sequel to Skyrim. We've had our experiences with The Elder Scrolls 3, Morrowind, The Elder Scrolls 4, Oblivion, The Elder Scrolls 5, Skyrim, and we are now awaiting the next game. We don't actually know yet what the next game is going to be. We still have speculations. A lot of people are saying it might be High Rock. Some people are hoping for Hammerfell. Other people are looking for Elsewhere. Some people are even looking for the Somerset Isles. There are so many provinces we have not yet discovered. But right now, I want to discuss what I want to see in the next game. How is Elder Scrolls 6 going to win over us, all of us, in the next game. I think the Elder Scrolls 6 is the perfect opportunity for Bethesda to truly show us what we've all been waiting for. It's been over 10 years since we have had a new game. We actually skipped an entire generation of consoles without seeing a new Elder Scrolls game. Not including the Elder Scrolls Online. Um, which doesn't really count. And also, the Elder Scrolls Online kind of started at the very beginning, of, well, at the very end of the 360 generation anyways. So it doesn't really count. <laughs> we've seen the we've seen Fallout 4. We've seen a that generation of Fallout. And we can expect that Fallout 5 will be even more interesting than Fallout 4 was. And we can definitely anticipate that the Elder Scrolls 6, which we have been waiting for over a decade, will be something surprising. But how surprising is certainly the question. In fact, during my Twitch streams, I often go back to Skyrim, heavily modded with over 150 mods, and I always think, how will Bethesda respond to Skyrim? There are so many directions that they could go in. So many things that we haven't even thought about. They could go back. They could go back to Morrowind. Maybe Elder Scrolls 6 could very well be the Morrowind remaster that everyone has been talking about. Maybe Elder Scrolls 6 goes back to High Rock, where, like in Daggerfall, maybe we see a couple different areas. Maybe we go back to Arena where we get to explore the entirety of Tamriel in its true form. How many games of Elder Scrolls are there going to be? Who knows? A lot of people have been anticipating that there's going to be at least 10, but we haven't even reached number six yet. Could Elder Scrolls 6 possibly be the game that lets us explore all of Tamriel? If so, how is that even possible? How will that happen? Now, before Starfield was announced, like officially announced, I would have thought that it would have just been one province. Elder Scrolls 6 makes sense one province at a time, just like Skyrim was. But something about Starfield makes me start to think, is Elder Scrolls 6 truly going to be so small that it's going to be confined to one province. But that's has been going in a direction where the maps just keep getting bigger and bigger. I mean, if you look at the Elder Scrolls Online, it is the entirety 
of Tamria at this point. They have slowly incorporated every single one of the provinces in DLC. Now, I haven't actually played The Elder Scrolls Online since about 2018, maybe? And even then, I didn't really get that far into it. But it is interesting that they are covering every single one of the provinces. They even did Somerset Isles. They've done elsewhere. They've done Skyrim again. They've done Skyrim so many times, they're running out of consoles to release Skyrim on. But that doesn't mean that it's the end of Skyrim. In fact, I think there could very well be Skyrim tie-ins to the next game. So far, there hasn't really been continuity per se. Right? There's only been bits and pieces sprinkled out throughout the throughout the games. There's never been a kind of this happened in this game and then this game happened. Oblivion has some bits and pieces sprinkled in Skyrim. Right? Oblivion kind of touched a little bit on Morrowind and Skyrim time touched a little bit on Oblivion, but they they're so far apart that they aren't really sequels. They're not really direct sequels. And that's kind of the beauty of the Elder Scrolls franchise is that you can delve into any one of the games and not have any knowledge of the previous games. Sure, the previous games will help boost the amount of lore that you know, but it's not an entirely it's not entirely necessary to learn about. But what makes Skyrim I mean sorry what makes the Elder Scrolls 6 so different is the fact that for the first time, the Elder Scrolls franchise, the Elder Scrolls fandom, is so big. When the Elder Scrolls V Skyrim was released, Scott, Elder Scrolls was not nearly as popular as it is right now. There are thousands of players, millions of people who have been introduced to the Elder Scrolls franchise through either the Elder Scrolls Online or the number of releases that Skyrim has had. That means that the Elder Scrolls fan base is so much more voluminous. <laughs> There's so many people in the Elder Scrolls fandom that now more than ever, there is this urge of Bethesda to deliver something that truly blows our minds. And would it be weird if when the Elder Scrolls 6 is announced that we find out that it's basically going to be Skyrim again, but in a different province? No. Because of Starfield, I'm starting to think that the Elder Scrolls 6 is something far bigger than we could have ever imagined. And that's why it's taking so long to make. We have been told by Todd Howard that he was waiting for technology to be released so that they could make the Elder Scrolls 6. But they, he also said that they were wanting to make a new IP, which is Starfield, before Elder Scrolls 6. Hmm. Now it does make sense that they would have waited for the next generation to make the next game. Because they did make one game in the current gen er, in the previous generation, which was Fallout 4. So it makes sense that they could wait for the next generation to make the next game. Perhaps they were waiting for something to be made so that they could make Starfield and the Elder Scrolls 6 so much bigger than they ever were before. I mean, Starfield is obviously a new IP, has new expectations, but the Elder Scrolls 6 is so, so anticipated that the moment that it's announced, it will break the internet. I guarantee that it will break the internet because we'll be like, hey, oh my gosh, I'm 30. <laughs> the, the Elder Scrolls 6 is finally being released. 
I was 11 when Skyrim was released. I am 22 now. It's probably, I'm probably going to be 30 by the time The Elder Scrolls 6 comes out. And why do I think it's also going to be when I'm 30 that The Elder Scrolls 6 comes out? Because Bethesda loves anniversaries. And just think, on the 20th Skyrim anniversary, the game that is released is The Elder Scrolls 6. It makes so much sense. But what will The Elder Scrolls 6 even be? Before Starfield, I thought it would be just one province. But since Starfield is in including the a huge galaxy, in theory, I feel like it wouldn't make any sense for the Elder Scrolls 6 to be in one province. What I think they're going to do is they're going to make all of Tamriel explorable. It's going to be a true open world RPG. So open that you can go from province to province and explore the world of Tamriel. I also think that what's going to happen is we'll probably start in one location. Okay, maybe we start in High Rock. Maybe we start in elsewhere. Maybe we choose where we start. That's also a possibility. But you know how the classic vanilla thing is you go, in, you're a prisoner. You usually start as a prisoner because you start as nothing. That doesn't mean that they have to do that in the Elder Scrolls 6, but they probably will do that because it's a long standing tradition. You always have the player be a prisoner. And then modders come in and make the alternate start, which basically means that potentially you could start anywhere in the Elder Scrolls 6. And if the Elder Scrolls 6 is truly all of Tamriel, just imagine the field day the modern community would have. There are already over 20,000 mods in Skyrim. And counting. <laughs> There's probably way more outside of the Nexus. I mean, Nexus has a lot of mods. And The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim is the most moddable game on the Nexus mod met on the Nexus mod site. And they have a lot of games hosted. And that's only on Nexus. Nexus does not have all of the mods. Every modder of Skyrim knows that there are a lot more other sites that have even more mods. Like the Lovers Lab. <clears throat> and that means that when you have a playground that is so big, whew, just imagine the amount of mods that would come out of that. People are already talking about how moddable Starfield is going to be. Starfield hasn't even been released yet, but there are so many features in Starfield where people are already starting to think about what to do. And Bethesda knows that their most important part of their games is the modding community and giving the modders something they can do to truly turn the game into whatever they want. Bethesda is one of the few developers that have made it so accessible for anyone to become a modder. So much they released the creation kit, which is basically the creation engine of what they use to a degree to make their games. That means that the, the player has the ability to go into the engine and make it whatever they want. People have done tremendous works in Skyrim alone to build that. 
So what happens when modders have the ability to mod the entirety of Tamriel? Now, you might be thinking, Ruby, the entirety of Tamriel would be huge, and Skyrim is already huge. How in the world would we, would we be able to navigate that? But let's say we start in High Rock. How do we get from High Rock all the way to Black Marsh? Well, to answer that, I will refer to another game called The Witcher 3. The Witcher 3, when you zoom out to the world map, right, you get a bunch of different areas, different provinces, I suppose. You know, you have Valen, you have Novigrad, and so on and so forth. And you, at some point, go to each and every one of those spots. And each province has their own map, some of which that are the size of something like Skyrim. So it's simple. You use that system for the Elder Scrolls VI. When you zoom out, you can, you can have multiple layers of maps. So you have the local map, which shows where your city is. You have the, <laughs> the province map, maybe. So you see all of Skyrim, all of High Rock, all of whatever. And then you have the world map, where you see all of Tamriel, the Tamriel map, and you see all of the provinces that are labeled. Some of them might be restricted. Some of them might you might be able to travel to and from. For example, if you're trying to go to Black Marsh as a Nord, that might not be as doable because people know that Black Marsh is really only meant for Argonians and a few like it is very complicated, right? But that doesn't mean it's not doable. Before Starfield, I've been like, yeah, they're probably going to stick to, like, one province. But after Starfield? Especially since Elder Scrolls Six is coming after Starfield. And potentially Starfield is whatever, exactly what they have said it is going to be, which is the biggest RPG of all time. You can explore the multiple star systems, multiple planets... If you can do that in Starfield, just imagine what you can do in the Elder Scrolls 6. Now, if they do happen to say, hey, let's make it just like a couple provinces, that would also make sense too. I could see them doing High Rock, Harrowfell, maybe a bit of Skyrim. <laughs> kind of, you know, but I feel like at this point, they would think it's not so overwhelming to be able to explore the entirety of Tamriel. And in fact, if you think about it, they have made all of Tamriel in their games. They've made Skyrim. They've made Morrowind. They've made Cyrodiil. I was about to say Oblivion. You could go to Oblivion too. They've even made these games in the Elder Scrolls Online. And there is fast travel. Now, what do you say, hmm, what about those who don't want to fast travel? Could get a horse. <laughs> a horse to, to ride. But there are also boats. And some people are not opposed to doing carriages, boats, something else, dragons? I don't know, ride a freaking dragon across Tamriel. Why not? I think that there is so much potential of allowing the entirety of Tamriel to be explored that it's almost tempting, it's almost impossible to see them not, to not do any to do anything else. Like it, I feel like it is the answer for the Elder Scrolls Six. As to what I want to see in the Elder Scrolls Six, full customization diverse backgrounds maybe multiple starting positions i can see it where i mean the elder scrolls loves to put that that the singular start 
And they are definitely doing that for Starfield as well. So I think it is going to be just a one beginning. Maybe you're plopped down in Hammerfell. But depending on where they go, it's it really it really depends. Uh, I mean, think about it this way. I can see the exact storyline now. It's the Great War. Maybe even the, the, the current Great War that's happening. You know, now Skyrim is under Thalamore control. It's, it's, in, it's, it's under the Aldmeri Dominion control. You have, you are a prisoner of war. You are being imprisoned by maybe the Alakir warriors. So you go into prison and you are questioned. You are asked, who are you? And you then create your character. From this, you can make any character. And there are a number of playable races that could actually be added to the Elder Scrolls 6, but let's say that you have the standard races. The Argonians, Khajiit, the Bretons, the the, the Nords, the, the, did I say the Khajiit already? The, the Redguard, the Orcs, the number of Elves. <laughs> let's say you stick with, like those are, those, you have the standard races again. And each of those races could have different abilities, different features that allow them to go to maybe different parts, maybe different interactions. For example, if you're an Argonian, you would have no problem going into Black Marsh. If you're a Nord, you would have no problem going into Skyrim. And it might even affect how the different provinces treat you. We know that Skyrim tends to welcome Nords or human-like people. So, Bretons and Redguard. Skyrim is not so welcoming to the, the, the kin. The kin species. The, the um, Argonians, Kashit, Orcs, etc. They're not even welcome to the, to the elves either. But something like Hammerfell is going to have different views on that issue. And something like Black Marsh is going to be entirely different. Imagine Nord going to Somerset Isle. That's a little. That's going to be a little bit of much, right? It's gonna. It's going to affect your interaction. So your race is going to affect how characters react to you. That makes sense. Now, when you make your character, you are also through different things. Let's say you're being processed, maybe. Maybe you're being processed. And you, that's when you kind of go about and make your background. Maybe you say that you were a spy for the Thalmors and you insist that you are not working with them, but you are working against them. You're trying to stop them. You could say that you are part of the Alamir Dominion and how dare the Alakir warriors try to imprison you. You there are so there's actually so many ways to make to incorporate those backgrounds. It wouldn't be the first time that you have those backgrounds either. It could be a way of forming your class a little bit. Or it could just be forming your background. It could also be the the way that they incorporate alternative starts. You're still a prisoner, but how are you a prisoner? Why are you a prisoner? That could be a very interesting way of setting up your character. And then on top of that, you, you can be asked your sign. You can even be asked if you have any deities that you follow. This would incorporate kind of the system that Imperius did with Skyrim, in where each race has different deities, different things that they follow. And maybe you're given the option to have been worshipping all these different people. Maybe you're, maybe you're an Altmer that has been worshipping Talos because you actually agree that he is a divine. Maybe you're a Nord 
who doesn't worship the nine divines, but you worship somebody else. Could be a possibility. You could even start building your class, and maybe your class determines the, the gear that you start with, right? If you're a prisoner, you probably had belongings. You, if you are a warrior, you probably had a set of armor, maybe a sword, maybe a warhammer. You could, you could probably select those specialties that you are, you, that you have. Because it wouldn't really make sense if you started from nothing, but it would make sense if you started from something, right? Maybe you are nothing. Maybe you don't have anything. Maybe you're just a beggar or something. Maybe you could incorporate into that background building. I think that, I think it being able to create a specific character. Maybe you could even choose whether you're dragonborn or not. Maybe if you're a Nord, you have a higher chance of being a Dragonborn. Maybe if you're not a Nord, maybe there's a less chance that you are a Dragonborn. So this could be a way to incorporate the shouts and the dragons without forcing the player to be a Dragonborn. You'd be like, hey, oh, I'm a Nord. I'm also a son of, <laughs> I don't know, um... You could say that you follow our cat. You could say that you... <laughs> I don't know. There's, there's so many ways that you could do it. But you could definitely, definitely make it optional. Imagine you're someone who has light talents though. Who just knows how to shout, but you're not Dragonborn. That's a possibility too. And maybe this setup determines kind of the path that you're going to take. If you're not Dragonborn, you obviously can't kill dragons. But that doesn't mean you can't interact with them. You just won't be able to absorb their soul and get rid of them forever. Maybe if you're not Dragonborn, you can kill a dragon. But, you know, that dragon might return later for revenge. Because you didn't actually kill him. Because you're not Dragonborn. All of this world building would be amazing for the Elseworlds 6. On top of that, there's so many different armors, different weapons that you could wield, especially if you're dealing with the entirety of Tamriel. Every province has their different types of weapons. Remember that the Red Guards have curved swords. <laughs> and there's all sorts of different things. Maybe if you're in Morrowind, there's a potential that you have already been in the Morag Tong. Maybe the Morag Tong could even make a comeback. What I really want to see is the world become so much bigger. Not in size, but in characters. You could have a game that is the size of Skyrim again. Easily. Maybe we are in just one province. But that doesn't mean that we're limited to that one province's worldviews or interactions. Perhaps you receive a message from someone in Skyrim and saying, Hey, there's a dragon uh, uh, there's a there's a dragon coming your way or something, I don't know. <laughs> I just I just wanted to feel more whole. Feel like you truly are shaping the world. And I want to make it so that actions have consequence. If you join the Dark Brotherhood and are wearing, head to toe, the Dark Brotherhood armor, some people might randomly attack you because they don't like the Dark Brotherhood because they're assassins. Maybe the guards kind of eye you and be like, huh. Maybe you're part of the Thieves Guild. And you're wearing head to toe the Thieves Guild armor. And the guards are like, what are you doing? <laughs> hmm. I should keep an eye on you. 
Because you're, you're screaming, hey, I'm a thief. Hey, I'm, a, I, I'm an assassin. The guards are probably going to be much more wary of you unless you're in certain areas where they don't really care. Now, maybe you build up reputation. You, your, your reputation would go from hole to hold, province to province. Right? If you're wanted in every single province of, of the world, of Tamriel, people might fear you. People might be more agitated towards you. People might even try to kill you <laughs> and try to turn you in for a bounty. You don't necessarily have to have one person make a contract against you. Instead of hired thugs, maybe if you're just wanted, you have bounty hunters coming after you. You have assassins coming after you. You have everyone who wants to try to kill you come after you because your head means a lot of money. <laughs> or maybe you don't build any reputation. Maybe you're just nobody. Maybe you start a farm. Maybe you go farming. Maybe you plant some crops, or harvest them, sell them. Just live a normal life. I think that is what makes Elder Scrolls so beautiful, is that you can completely disregard the main quest and just do whatever you want. And I think there's a perfect opportunity to allow the players to do just that. If they want their first playthrough to be, I'm making a farm and I'm going to make Farmville, then they should be able to do that. And they should be able to buy a house, and they should be able to just plant some crops and call it a day. Maybe every once in a while that farm gets attacked. Maybe as they attack, as they defend their farm, or maybe when they go out shopping, they see an interaction that gets them thinking, Hey, whoa. Hey. <laughs> maybe I should get involved. Imagine <laughs> the, the things that you can do in the Elder Scrolls Six. Should be everything that you can do in the in the Skyrim, but more. For example, you shouldn't be able to join the companions when when you're the leader of the Dark Brotherhood, or even when you are a member of the Silver Hand. In fact, you should be able to join any guild that has been in Skyrim, for example, or in in Tamriel. But that doesn't mean you can join every guild. There should be guilds in every province. But if you're already part of the of the guild, for example, let's say let's say you're part of the Dark Brotherhood. You join the Dark Brotherhood in Skyrim. And then you go to Hammerfell. Well the Dark Brotherhood has its own presence there. Maybe they know you. Maybe you are the listener, or maybe you are the keeper, or whatever. And they know you, and so they're like, hmm. Maybe they welcome you into their sanctuary. Maybe they don't. Maybe someone tells you, oh, this is the passcode to our, our thing. Maybe they don't. I think it really depends if you, how high up, how much of, how much notoriety you have. I think what I truly want Elder Scrolls 6 to be is a playground for all of us. I think you guys are anticipating the Elder Scrolls 6 just as much as I am. So comment down below. What is your must have in the Elder Scrolls 6? Like you, it either has it or it's a deal breaker. Comment down below. What are your wish lists? What's your wish list like? Comment that below. Make a whole list of things you want to see in the Elder Scrolls 6. Do you want it to be all of Tamriel? Do you want it to be a smaller map? Do you want it to be... Do you want more playable races? Maybe you could be a Dwemer. Maybe you could be a, a Snow Elf. The world is your oyster. I don't even know what the heck that means. <laughs> Comment down below what you want to see in the Elder Scrolls 6. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Leave a like on this video for more content like this. We're going to have a lot to talk about. We'll talk about the Elder Scrolls 6 
even more. We'll talk about Mass Effect 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. We'll talk about a lot of games. That is what's coming to you from me. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace out, guys. It's been a blast. Thank you for watching, and goodbye.